Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in case if you are planning to join PhD in India and if you are struggling with writing a lab or uh, struggling with the whole process like what exactly it is or how you should choose a particular lab then this video is going to help. Okay, so I'm going to share uh, how you can choose a particular lab, what are the parameters that you have to look upon it, what should be the proper approach to find out a particular lab for your interest, okay? And understand this thing that it is very important to have a good lab because for the next four or five years you are going to stay in that particular place, you are going to work in that particular environment and you are going to be, you know, your future on your career is going to depend upon that particular thing that how much productive you are, how much uh, like supportive your lab is, how good the involvement of your lab is. So all these things uh, are going to play a very important role for your future. So it's very important to choose a good lab or to find a good lab for your PhD. Right. So let's just start with it. So when you have done your entrance exam, let's say you've qualified any of these entrance exam, and now you're planning to join this PhD, the first thing which should be very clear to you is your area of interest or your research interest. Okay, because that is something which is going to be the first parameter to sort down the things. Okay. And let's say you are a chemistry student and your area of interest is, uh, let's say, nanochemistry or let's say material chemistry. Uh, it can be anything. Okay. So you should be having a specific area of interest. Uh, like for example, you cannot say that my area of interest or my uh, research interest is in inorganic chemistry. You cannot say like that. Inorganic chemistry is a vast topic. You have to choose a particular topic on there. Whether you can say uh, my interest is in organometallic compounds or it is in coordination compound, that will still work. But you cannot say the whole inorganic or organic chemistry or physical chemistry as such. You have to be very specific with the topic of interest. So first thing is to choose a topic of interest. So once you are done with research interest or once you are done with topic of interest, now you have to like look upon the labs or look upon the things related to that, okay? Now, the second uh, important thing, so the first important thing is topic of interest. The second important thing is the institute, okay? Now, it is also important to do your PhD from a good institute because, see, the institute is going to provide you two very important parameters. The first one is infrastructure. It is going to provide you the instrumentation. It is going to provide you the lab equipment. It is going to provide you the you know the overall culture of the institute. So all these things are going to help you to develop the things easily. Let's say if you are planning to do a PhD from let's say as I have given example of uh, nanochemistry. So let's say you are doing uh, from nanochemistry from a particular institute which does not have infrastructure, which does not have a proper infrastructure. Let's for for the sake of simplicity, let's take an example of organic synthesis. Okay, because many of us are in, like uh, more uh, familiar with that. So let's say if you are an organic synthetic synthetic chemist and your area of interest is organic synthesis, and you are trying to do your PhD from a general uh, from a usual university or institute which does not have that good in, good infrastructure, and then uh, a particular person is doing the same topic from some good institute, I think, or from some previous institute, okay? Now, the difference will be that when you will be synthesizing all the of pulp, now you will need NMR, you will need IR, you will need uh, mass spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, uh, you will also need uh, uh, like X-ray diffractometer, depending upon what type of compound you are synthesizing, whether it is crystal or not. So depending upon all these, you now need characterization of like equipment, characterization uh, instruments to characterize your compound and get your results done. Now, in a particular institute which does not have a good infrastructure, you have to like you will be struggling with that. You will be synthesizing the compound, then you will be like sending your compounds to the nearby good institutes. For example, if you if your institute flies somewhere in the northern part, so you will be sending it to some nearby IIT, IZER, or some other place which has that facility which has NMR, IER, mass and all those things and you have to pay for that. Okay, that's also not free. Whereas a particular person who is doing lecture from some IIT, I'm just giving an example, okay. So someone who is doing from some IIT, that person will have that advantage that they will be having, most of the IITs have that, so they have NMR, IER and all the instruments. So what they, he will do, he will synthesis the component uh, in his lab, he will take the compound to the NMR lab, he will, like in one day, he will be getting the NMR results in next day, you will be getting IR and all those things. So it will be much quicker for that person to characterize the compound. And as fast as you will characterize the compound as early, you can, you know, publish and all those things. Like all these time reduces. So that is the major difference which comes in. So that's why it becomes very important to choose a good institute, to choose a premium institute. Like choose the best institute based upon your qualification 
depending upon what exam you have qualified and depending upon how much eligible you are for that particular thing. So choosing a good institute helps you over there. Okay. So that is the second parameter. The third and most important parameter is of course the lab and the PL. Okay. So now the third thing, so you have chosen the area of interest. You have not seen a particular institute. You have selected an institute. Now in that institute, you have to go to the profile of different professors who are working in your area of interest. For example, you are, let's say, interested in organic synthesis. Then you have to go to, let's say, you are interested in a particular IIT now. So go to that IIT, look upon their secondary profile and see the lab which are working in organic synthesis. Now you have to choose among those labs, you have to choose a particular PIM under it. Now getting, a, you know, supportive PI or a good PI or productive PI, these, this is a very difficult thing and there is no online parameter by which you can measure that, okay? You cannot just by looking on the profile of a particular PI or a particular supervisor, you cannot say that he will be supportive, he will be, you know, the lab environment will be easy or all those things. You cannot say that, okay? Unless and until you talk to somebody from that lab, okay? That's the best way. Uh, that's, that's what I think. That's the best way. So the best way is you just see the particular lab that you find, let's say, three uh, professors or three supervisors who have the same area of interest and they are in that particular IIT or that particular institute. Now go to LinkedIn and search for their lab or search for their lab students in their profile itself. Will be, you will be able to see. Mail them or those students, okay? Or reach out to them on LinkedIn. Try to ask them about the lab. Try to ask them about the uh, like professor. Of course, it is very difficult for a current PhD student to tell anything about the lab because there are, I'm, I'm being very uh, like honest with you, all the labs in India are not that happening, okay? There are some toxic labs as well, so, but nobody is going to tell you directly, okay? But they might give you a hint, okay? A good uh, senior or a good student will definitely give you a hint about that. So take that hint and if you see something fishy, don't go for that lab, okay? Choose another lab. Uh, the other thing which you can look upon, if you, let's say, don't find anybody on LinkedIn and nobody responds to you, or let's say nobody tells you anything, then the other way of finding it out is by looking upon a professor's profile. You can see three things. First thing is how productive he is. Like you just see that, uh, how fast that particular, like how frequently the particular lab is producing results. So in the last year, how many results they have published. In the previous year, how many results they have published. That's the first thing. Second, Look up on the publication uh, like area or look up on the journals in which they are publishing, whether they are publishing in good journals, whether they are publishing in, in uh, like mediocre journals. Now, it is very difficult to decide because you are you don't have that much, uh, you know, uh, you don't have that much expertise about the level of uh, journals. But in general, you can see whether they are publishing in high impact or low impact. Okay. But I will tell you one very important point over here, just a disclaimer that all the low impact journal does not mean that they are not good journals. There are many journals whose impact factor is around three or three and three and a half, but they are really good in their seat. Okay. So it depends upon various factors, but yeah, you can in general look upon that. Okay. And the third thing is you have to look upon the uh, publication who are getting the authorships in the publication, whether uh, the lab, the whole lab is productive or not, whether the lab, every student of the lab is getting results or majority of the students are getting result or not. So that means the lab is inclusive. That means the PI includes everybody in a particular project and they publish results early or they publish results frequently. And that is a good sign of a good lab. Okay. So I'm being very general over here because sitting in, a, let's say, in a particular place or in a particular state out of or away from that particular institute, away from that particular lab, you cannot predict or you cannot uh, you know, get to know each and every little bit of that lab. But these are some parameters by which you can segregate a lab. But in case if you get some senior or in case if you get some student of the lab to talk about the lab itself or about the lab environment, about the lab work, that is the best thing to do. Okay. So these are the points or these are the things if you take care of or if you uh, try to look upon these points or if you try to work upon these things, probably you will be getting a uh, best lab for your research. Okay. And again, I'm telling it is really, really, really very important to get a good lab to start your PhD career because next four or five years, you are going to stay in that particular environment. And further also, like after PhD also, whatever career you choose, uh, these, your PhD lab or your PhD work environment is going to help you a lot. 
One point which I missed while discussing about the institute is that a good institute has, because see, when, when a premium institute comes, they have a good history, they have, uh, they have been producing students from long back, they have a lot of alumni basically. So more alumni means more connections, means more people in different parts of the world, and that means more uh, like uh, chances of you to interact with a senior in another place. So after you finish your PhD, once you complete your PhD, there are chances that if let's say your Swiss senior was is somewhere in other part of the world, they might help you uh, to you know for a further uh, future to uh, or they can help you to assist you or to guide you for your further plans. Okay, so good alumni uh, like uh, network is also very important, which you might not get in um, like not so and you got newer institutes and all. Okay, so you should choose a good institute for that sake. So I thought of making this video because this is the hype time. Many of you have qualified exams now and you might be thinking of joining a particular institute. So I just tried to summarize everything in this video. So do let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll try to answer you over there except. And that's all from my side for this particular video. Take care, bye-bye, see you guys in the next one. Please do subscribe to this channel for more research related in uh, for more research related videos and take care. I'll see you in the next one.